A ton of severe weather is coming to the United States over the next seven days, and this is all because of multiple storm systems that'll bring the threat of damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes anywhere from the Great Plains and the Midwest back to the Southern Plains, the Gulf Coast, and even across the East Coast. So in today's forecast, we are going to break down exactly what you need to know about the weather that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven to 10 days. And we'll begin with what's happening across the country today. And over the last 24 hours, we've had some big storms across the central and southern plains. A lot of them have been winding down, but something that was very interesting yesterday is that we had a massive hailstorm back over near Austin, Texas. It was basically a lone supercell that dropped tons of large hail back over on the north side of Austin. We had upwards of baseball to apple-sized hail fall there. A multi-million dollar damage event happened there, and unfortunately, we are expecting more potential for hailstorms today back over in parts of Texas, Oklahoma, and even into Kansas, where more severe weather is ahead. And then back over in the southeast, we got a streaming area of moisture that is continuing to dump so, so much rain across areas in the Dixie Alley and back into the southeast with a broad upper level low spinning back over in the Midwest. This has actually helped to aid the threat of severe weather yesterday, and it's going to do the same thing today back over in the central and southern plains. And then as we go into tomorrow, that low pressure system is going to tighten up a little bit, and it'll bring the potential for a more organized risk of severe weather across the southeast, which may actually bring some significant damaging winds and may maybe even a couple of tornadoes. Now let's talk more about the weather pattern that'll be impacting the United States over the next seven to 10 days, as this is going to bring the threat of multiple rounds of severe weather. And this all begins today and tomorrow and will run all the way into next week. So let's begin with what's happening over the next couple of days. Broad low pressure is gonna be sitting in the Midwest. This will help to bring the threat of severe weather today and tomorrow across the Southern Plains, back into the Southeast where all hazards of severe weather will be on the table. And in a couple minutes, we're gonna go way more in detail about what is happening today and tomorrow and even into Saturday. Eventually by Saturday and Sunday, this low pressure system is going to become very large back over on the East Coast and this is going to bring much colder weather to areas like the Ohio Valley, the Mid-Atlantic and the Southeast in addition to bringing a lot of rainfall right up and down the East Coast from Florida back into New England on Saturday. By Sunday and Monday, this is going to be the beginning of a big transition in our weather pattern. We are going to go from this big trough back over on the East Coast to having a weak ridge in place back over in the Great Plains and multiple storm systems are going to form back over here along the West Coast. Notice we have three different low pressure systems. These are all going to eject at different times and they're going to bring the risk of severe weather, which really should kick off on Monday and will probably run all the way through Friday or Saturday of this upcoming week. So it is going to be a very active work week when it comes to our threat of severe weather. So this one looks like as we go into Monday, our first but pretty weak low pressure system will eject over the Rocky Mountains with at least some scattered severe weather being a possibility in the central and southern plains. I think the greatest threat will be in Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas, which is very similar to what we've been seeing here over the last week or so. Now, as we go into Tuesday, that storm system will move up into the Midwest. There could still be a little bit of severe weather left over, but I think anything that happens will likely be more isolated. Nothing super organized by the looks of it. But look at this right here. Another storm system coming right from the Pacific Southwest, and this is going to bring another threat for severe weather. I think especially on Tuesday and Wednesday across the central and southern Southern Plains and perhaps even back into the Midwest on both uh, Wednesday and Thursday with all hazards of severe weather being on the table. As we go into Friday, we may get another little shortwave trough that ejects over the Rockies. This could also bring another risk of severe weather on Friday of this upcoming week. And then by Saturday into Sunday, our jet stream is lifted very far off to the north, but should bring even more severe weather to areas like the Northern Plains in the Midwest by the weekend. And then really anything beyond June 7th or so becomes very uncertain as that is still well over 10 days out, but notice how the GFS model continues to show these large scale troughs moving right over the Rockies, promoting a very active stretch of severe weather over the next couple of weeks. Now let's put this all in the more simplistic terms with the future radar, beginning with what's happening today, which will have plenty of scattered showers and thunderstorms in the southern plains in the southeast. We're going to go more in detail about Thursday and Friday in just a few minutes. As we go into late Friday and Saturday, more storms will be possible along the east coast where damaging winds hail and a few tornadoes will all be a possibility. Meanwhile, high pressure will be building across the Great Plains, which will prevent most severe weather from occurring on Saturday and Sunday for almost all the United States. I really don't expect a whole lot of severe weather this weekend, so definitely enjoy the weather. While it is nice, we might not even have a video tomorrow if the weather kind of stays this way, at least for the weekend, but I do think things take a big turn as we go into early next week. And that is all because we'll have multiple storm systems heading over the Rocky Mountains. So beginning with Monday, we are expecting the threat of at least isolated severe weather to take place, and there is a couple of different areas 
areas that I'd be keeping a close eye on. One of which will be the Northern Plains, which I think is a more guaranteed threat of severe weather. The Storm Prediction Center has already outlined a slight risk of severe weather in parts of North Dakota and South Dakota, with hail and wind being the biggest concern. But further down to the south, this is a more, I think, more important area to be watching for on Monday, because if storms fire in this environment and our low pressure system ejects over the Rockies fast enough, there could be all hazards of severe weather on the table in the central and southern plains, with tornadoes even being a possibility. So this is an area that we need to keep a very close eye on on Monday. But again, there is some uncertainty whether we are going to see storms there. That's the big question mark as of right now, which will likely become a bit more certain whether we will or will not be seeing storms as we get closer to Monday. On Tuesday, this low pressure system moves further to the east and the Storm Prediction Center has another slight risk of severe weather in place for parts of the central plains on Tuesday, mainly from Kansas City back into eastern Oklahoma, where the highest confidence right now resides, where we'll be seeing at least some scattered to maybe numerous severe weather. But honestly, we could see severe weather anywhere in this area. We are going to have a very large warm sector on Tuesday, which means a lot of moisture is going to be streaming out of the Gulf, and it's going to be covering a very large area. So any supercells or lines of storms that develop will be very favorable in this, in this environment for all hazards of severe weather, including damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. On Wednesday, the storm system will start to move further to the east. Right now, the GFS model is indicating our low pressure system will be north of the Great Lakes, which means there should at least be some isolated to scattered severe weather in the Ohio Valley. And then on Thursday, the storm system will weaken, but it could bring some isolated severe weather to the east coast. And I do think we'll continue to see severe weather back over in parts of the Central Plains and the Southern Plains by the end of next week. And we may see another big storm system eject over the Rockies. And if that does happen, we could even see more significant severe weather take place. But at this point, anything beyond Wednesday or so is uncertain. But definitely buckle up. It is going to be a very active next seven days across the United States. And even by the middle of June, we are expecting this weather pattern to stay fairly active across most of the country with many shots of severe weather ahead. Also, I want to give all of you a quick heads up that yes, there is a low chance that a tropical storm may develop in the Caribbean or in the Gulf over the next couple of weeks, but the odds of that, in my opinion, are still around 10%. It's a very low chance here over the next couple of weeks, and even if we saw anything in the United States, it would not be until sometime around June 9th up until about June 15th. So again, very long-term forecasting here. There's been a lot of buzz about this on social media, but just as a disclaimer, it is an extremely low chance as of right now, but it is a possibility. Now let's talk more about the severe weather potential for the next few days beginning with what's happening today, which is tossing trampolines on tall trees Thursday. We have two slight risks of severe weather in place, one of which is in Texas, back over near Abilene and also near Lubbock, and then another slight risk in Georgia and South Carolina, and a large marginal threat that encompasses the Mississippi River Valley all the way from North Carolina back into New Mexico. Main concern for today will be scattered damaging winds, also large to very large hails in play, mainly back over in Texas, where we could again have something similar to what we had yesterday back over near Austin, Texas, with a few hail storms producing the threat of baseball perhaps even up to you know grapefruit sized hail here across parts of central and west texas additionally we have a very rare situation here we have four different two percent tornado risks keep in mind this is a very low chance of seeing a tornado but pick your poison here we could see an isolated tornado over in georgia or south carolina maybe one near the gulf coast could have one back over in texas might even have one or two back over near the mississippi river valley right now i'm the most confident in these two actually performing and maybe producing one one or two tornadoes this afternoon. So definitely stay weather aware, have multiple ways to receive warnings. With this madness happening, there is definitely a chance of a live stream, so make sure you subscribe to the channel. But generally speaking, I don't think we'll be seeing anything crazy today. It'll just be maybe an isolated tornado or two here across the board. On Friday, the risk of severe weather starts to actually increase a little bit as that low pressure system strengthens in the Midwest. We are expecting a slightly more organized risk of severe storms on Friday, anywhere from Maryland back to the Gulf Coast with our slight risk encompassing central Virginia into southeastern Alabama and there's also a tiny little marginal threat back over in Wisconsin and Illinois where large hail and damaging winds are the biggest concerns especially back over in the mid-Atlantic and the southeast I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the storm prediction center goes to a level three out of five enhanced risk of severe weather because of the threat of damaging winds on top of that large hail is going to be a possibility and a couple of tornadoes will be a possibility mainly from about Richmond Virginia back closer to central Georgia so definitely have multiple ways to receive warnings and then on Saturday we have one of the lowest risks of severe weather that we've had in quite some time we got two marginal threats of severe weather one in Texas and one in the mid-Atlantic where isolated damaging winds and hail be a possibility but finally Saturday and Sunday do appear as if they will be somewhat of a break
break when it comes to significant severe weather. So here's the timing for today, beginning with the Southern Plains. A few supercells will begin to fire off right around 4 to 5 o'clock back over in West Texas, where the biggest concern will be hail and wind. But we may see an isolated tornado or two, especially if we get a discrete supercell like the HRRR model is showing just off to the east of Lubbock. And then by around 6 to 7 o'clock, these storms will continue. Notice how they're relatively isolated to widely scattered, but it'll be mostly focused, I think, right around Lubbock, Texas, and just off to the east of there. Right around Abilene, these storms should be around there, around 7, 8, 9 o'clock tonight. And then eventually by about midnight or so, we'll just have a cluster of storms rolling anywhere from Dallas, Fort Worth, back towards San Angelo, where damaging winds will continue. And then generally speaking, really not much of a tornado or hail risk left over with those storms. And then as we go into Friday, things look a lot quieter across the southern plains, at least for a change. It's been very active recently. Back over in the Ohio Valley, we'll have a few supercells that'll form right around 3 to 4 o'clock this afternoon in northern and central Arkansas and southern Missouri, where an isolated threat of hail, wind, and even a tornado or two will be a possibility. The one question mark that we do have with today's setup here in the Mississippi River Valley will be how discreet these storms do stay, because if they stay more discreet, then this will be a much more elevated tornado threat, in my opinion. But if they stay a little bit more clustered, like the HRRR model is showing, then I think the tornado threat will struggle. But we have plenty of wind shear, so this should at least be a one, maybe two tornado kind of day here if these storms are able to stay discreet. And then by around 8 to 9 o'clock tonight, these storms will approach Memphis and also northern Mississippi, where damaging winds will be the primary concern as the storms will likely begin to cluster together and they should fall apart around or just after midnight in northern Mississippi. And then tomorrow, we are expecting scattered showers and thunderstorms out there really by late morning, early afternoon across the Appalachian Mountains, and they will intensify by around 2 to 3 o'clock across North Carolina back into Georgia. This will be mostly a line of thunderstorms, so damaging winds the primary concern, but embedded tornadoes in that line will be a possibility. And then by around 6 to 7 o'clock, that line of storms continues to push east across Virginia, North Carolina, and then we'll be moving offshore in South Carolina by around 7 to 8 o'clock tomorrow night. And then as we go into early Saturday morning, there will still be some rain out there across parts of Maryland, New Jersey, and Delaware, but severe weather will be winding down sometime around 10 to 12 o'clock tomorrow evening. And as always, thank you all so much for watching today's forecast. If you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe down below. I know I've said it three days in a row that we'll probably not have a video at least one of these days this week, and I'm going to be honest, there's just so much weather to talk about, it's kind of hard not to make a video on it. So we're going to continue to have daily updates as long as there's something new to talk about. With that said, don't be surprised if our video forecasts Friday until Sunday are in the afternoon rather than the morning. I have some stuff going on, so there is a chance that our videos may be pushed back to the afternoon hours. Just want to give you guys a quick heads up in case that does happen. Nonetheless, make sure you subscribe to the channel. We got a lot of video updates coming up as a very active weather pattern is about to unfold.